Friday, November 25th, 2016, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. It's a little later than usual today. It's uh, just before 9 p.m. London. Uh, and uh, I just want to talk today about uh, Martin Armstrong, the uh, economist. And uh, he was in jail to 2011. I think he was in jail for quite a few years. But around 2007, 2008, he started uh, writing stuff uh, from jail and people posted it on the internet. And uh, I had a colleague at work at the time I worked uh, for MF Global, which prior to that was Man Financial. And uh, my friend and I, uh, who was a broker too, we, we enjoyed reading his stuff on the internet and we published this. He published this on October 10th, 2008, and it's called It's Just Time. And basically, he it's quite a long report. It's over, let's see, it's about 70 pages. And basically, uh, he goes on about uh, cycles and how uh, it's very difficult to stop cycles and that, you know, there's always people trying to manipulate, you know, the markets or the economy, you know, be it uh, the the club, as he calls them, which are big, you know, uh, market participants or the billionaires who actually sometimes put a trade together, mostly in currencies and commodities, because Martin Armstrong argues that the CFTC uh, they're incompetent, you know, the people, apparently the, the lawyers that don't manage to work for the SEC or the U.S. Treasury uh, or the other regulate, you know, bigger regulators, uh, they go and work for the CFTC. And we know that the CFTC investigated the silver market for five years and never did anything. But the title is just time uh, is basically saying that there's nothing that governments or market manipulators can do once things turn. And they might, uh, you know, for a short period of time, uh, drive markets and make uh, profits, you know, guaranteed profits. And these are, and he, he points out that these people are not really traders. Uh, they're just like using, you know, their uh, wealth and basically collusion to drive markets like silver, rhodium, uh, copper, uh, f you know, foreign exchange. And I, I'm sure they're probably uh, using bigger markets now because I, I'm not too sure the SEC or the CFTC are really doing a great job. But uh, It's Just Time is actually a quote by Margaret Thatcher. And I read here from his, his report and I quote from his report. And he says, as Margaret Thatcher once said, it's just time. She instinct instinctively knew that cycles is exist because people just get tired of the same old thing. We have an absolute right to do good, honest government. That is the battle cry of every civil war known to history. Just as Julius Caesar was a man of the people who was cheered when he crossed the Rubicon, we need someone of integrity so bad. Uh, unless we obtain honest reform, we are perhaps inviting the gods of war to return. The people gave a fresh start and, and, and they crave fiscal. The people crave a fresh start and they crave fiscal responsibility. Where are the aspirations, dreams and promises of Jefferson and Madison? Where have they gone? So, yeah, this was written in 2008, eight years later. Uh, we do have someone we think might be that person in Trump, uh, but the verdict is still out. Uh, so, you know, when he talks about fiscal responsibility, uh, I don't really equate that with what Trump is thinking of doing. Uh, so... But anyway, uh, the topic of this video is more towards, you know, talking about cycles and how markets really can be manipulated in the short term. But as uh, Martin Armstrong says, 
when the tide turns, no one can stop it. And I think that's true. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen since the Trump election, before the markets opened on the 9th, early uh, trading in Europe and Asia, the Dow was down 800 points, uh, gold was up 60 bucks at 1,330, and everything's turned around since then. And I remember uh, a few comments that people made. You know, there are a few stories out the next day, and you kind of wonder if this billionaire club colluded and, you know, drove the markets just, just to make money, not even to, like, make uh, Obama look good or Trump look good. Because there, if you probably remember, there is a couple of stories. One was by uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, who had been buying gold since last year. And he said, oh, I've sold all my gold and I've, I've bought the stock market. And then there was a story that Carl, Carl Icahn, who supported Trump, uh, decided to buy a billion dollars worth of futures uh, before the market opened on the 9th. Uh, it makes you wonder, you know, if these people, uh, you know, get together and do this because this is what uh, uh, Martin Armstrong talks about here in this report. And it's one of the reasons why he thinks he was put in jail. Uh, and, and in this report, he, he says he was invited uh, to join this club. You know, basically it's a club of billionaires who put on these trades and they get together, they got so much firepower that uh, they're guaranteed to make money. And that I guess that's why they become even richer and richer. So there's a story here about sil silver manipulation in the late 90s. And I quote here uh, from um, Martin Armstrong. I'm going to read here. One of the brokers was Phillips Brothers in Connecticut. I believe they had an analyst on the payroll, so to speak, who had developed contacts in the press. I believe the stupid decision was made to try to get the press after me to stop the forecasts. Because he, uh, basically, Martin Armstrong came out and said, you know, the club's going to drive silver from $4 to $7. That was back in 1997. And then he goes on to say, a journalist from the Wall Street Journal called, accusing me of being short silver and trying to talk the market down. He was very hostile. We argued and I but bluntly told him, if I was short, why would I be saying it would rise from, from mid $4 range to $7? The conversation turned almost into a screaming match. He insisted I tell him who was behind the manipulation. I told him it didn't matter because he would never print the name. We yelled back and forth and finally I just said fine. It, it was Warren Buffett. He laughed saying Buffett did not trade commodities. I just com commented that's how much you know and slammed the phone down. And then a bit further down in this uh, part of this report. Uh, he says, and I quote again, to my shock, my telephone rang. It was a broker who was not part of the club. To let me know, the Bank of England called a meeting in the morning of all silver brokers. It was truly, I was truly shocked. Obviously, the press didn't want to believe me, but it seems the governments did listen. This was only a couple of hours after the call from the CFTC. Then came the real shockwave. Later that same day, Warren Buffett came out to head off the Bank of England and publicly admitted he had bought a billion dollars worth of silver. He denied man manipulating the market and said it would be a long-term investment. The Wall Street Journal called back the next day. The journalist was in total shock. He asked me, how did I know it was Buffett? I told him it was my job to know, and I hung up the phone, preferring not to get involved. So there you go. Uh, this is from Martin Armstrong. And the other uh, anecdote 
anecdotal or, you know, story that I have. I had another colleague at uh, MF Global, and he dealt more with uh, very high net worth individuals. I dealt more for institutions. Uh, but he told me once I, I, uh, that he had a, because we used to talk about the manipulation of markets, and he said he had a very big, uh, you know, client from North America. I won't say the country, and he was kind of uh, a billionaire and part of, the club, the, my friend said the same thing. And he said that uh, he would get phone calls from the other club members and say, oh, we're going to go along the euro against the dollar. And lo and behold, the euro would move, you know, three big figures. And these people would make, you know, billions of dollars. So, yeah, it exists. And I think that's what's been happening since the Trump um victory on November 8th, it, it, it's kind of a gray, uh, how can I say, gray area is the interregnum, you know, it's, uh, you've got a president that's a lame duck and one that hasn't really taken power yet, so there's like, you know, a free-for-all kind, so to speak, so I think that's what's, what's happened, uh, the club <laughs> is moving this market, you know, they, They've moved the stock market and they've moved, you know, precious metals down. And uh, it makes sense because the other markets like the FTSE and the, and the DAX, they, they're still like way below their all-time highs. And, but in the end, I think when it's time, uh, the stock market will turn down, the U.S. stock market, and the precious metals will turn up because... All the fundamentals are there, and these guys, you know, the club, whoever they are, uh, they they can't stop the tide uh, turning. So that's what I wanted to talk about this evening. I've got my end the Fed shirt as well. <laughs> I hope most of you like that. Billy is not here tonight because uh, he's in in the front of the house uh, with my wife with the music on because he's scared tonight because people are letting off fireworks. So it's good to have him with the music on so he doesn't listen to it. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, share this video far and wide. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. If you'd like to donate, there's some links below in the description. And I'll try to find a, a link to this report. Uh, I don't know if it's still out on the internet. Um, and put it below in the description. So uh, take care and I'll talk to you later. Bye.